Good morning, good morning, and welcome to RCN Ministries Global TV. I am Apostle Rosemary. This is my wonderful husband, Apostle Herbie. We're coming to you today with a word from the Lord. <clears throat> At this time, I'm going to turn this part of the service over to my wonderful, awesome husband, Apostle Herbie. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity once again. God, we thank you, Lord, for grace and mercy. God, we ask for compassion, God. Love, trust, God, Jesus, commitment, submission, Lord Jesus. Yes. Heavenly Father, in all these things, God. Heavenly Father, we pray the blood of Jesus over each and every one of us, God, Jesus. Yes, sir. Heavenly Father, we glorify you. We honor you, God, Jesus. We worship you, God, Jesus. We pray the Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we, we are humble for you. Humble, Lord Jesus, so we know how, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, cover us, Lord. We ask in your, in your precious name we pray. In Jesus' name, pray, amen. Amen, amen. God bless you. God bless you. Today, the message that the Lord has given us for his people um, is a very old scripture that we're all very familiar with. This is a revelation that the Holy Spirit um, hit me with. And I'm telling you, it literally almost caused me to topple over at the at the uh, the weight of what God is saying in this message. This message on today is entitled, What Do You See? What do you see, people of God? What do you see? Do you see destiny or do you see despair? Amen. Amen. Um, for those we're sharing to our Facebook page on today, I want to say that I am not monitoring that right now. Um, that I will. So if you're commenting and you're seeing this video, please understand I'm not ignoring. Um, I may click my tablet so I'll be able to see that. Um, but I just want you all to know that I'm not seeing any comments. So um, please know and understand that after the service is over, if I don't hop on my iPad to also look at what's going on on Facebook or my phone, that I will reply to those messages later. But I want to, I am going to, and we are going to stay focused on the word of God today. Amen. Amen. But we love you guys. Um, and we know that God is going to bless you with this message. So what do you see? Do you see your destiny or do you see despair, people of God? When we look at the names of Naomi, or some may pronounce Naomi's name, Naomi, it means beautiful, grace of God, my pleasantness. Um, it also represents the human soul. When we look at the name Ruth, Ruth means friendship, beauty, or satisfied. Friendship represents the human spirit. Remember the human soul, the human spirit. We look at the name Orpha. Orpha means stubbornness. Um, it also means her neck or the gazelle. Um, it, it also represents the back of the neck of the turning back. Um, you know how sometimes instead of staying focused, we begin to say don't veer and don't look to the left nor to the right, but stay focused and walk the straight and narrow path straight and narrow path of the Lord. But many times we need to remember that Orpha, even her name meant the turning back or the looking back, looking back, looking what is behind you. Your back represents your past. Ah, come on somebody. But when you're looking forward, it represents your future. So God is saying on today, stop looking back at what you lost. Stop looking back on where you've been. Stop looking back on what you've gone through. Stop looking back at what is behind you and stay focused on what is before you, my God. Amen. Mm. We look at the word destiny, and destiny means a predestination. Uh, the definition, it, it, it means the events that will necessarily happen to a particular person or thing in the future. We look at the word and the definition despair. Despair is a hopelessness, a desperation, a distress, an anguish, a pain, an unhappiness a dejection, a re, uh, depression, despondency, a gloom, a melancholy, a discouragement. Uh, this definition also represents complete loss or absence of hope. We've come today to tell you that the Lord is sending you hope on today. Come on Many of you have been despaired. Many of you have been feeling hopelessness. You've had a feeling of desperation. You've had anguish. You've had distress. But the Lord has sent us here today with a word in our belly to tell you that he is sending you hope. 
Not only is the Lord sending you hope, but he's also sending you help. Amen. Amen. My God, he's sending you help. He's sending people in this season to undergird you. He's sending people in this season to help you. He's sending people in this season to love you for real. He's sending people in this season to support what sits on the head. My God. Mm. You won't lose anything in this season. This is your season to gain everything that the enemy took and everything that the enemy stole from you. He's going to have to give it back, my God. Amen. Somebody say it's regurgitation, it's regurgitation time. time. Uh, it's time for the enemy to spit up everything that he took from me, everything that he ate, the palmer worm, the canker worm, the locust, and the caterpillar is going to have to give it back. Yes, Lord. We're coming from Ruth chapter 1 verse 6 through 7 and it's the nlt translation we're going to jump through um different translations you know how apostle and herbie um and i do so we just want to flow and make sure you all know what translations that we're in so we'll try to remember to shout that out it deals with naomi and Ruth return mm -hmm. then naomi heard in mobile that the Lord has blessed his people in Judea by mm -hmm. giving them good crop again. Mm -hmm. So Naomi and her daughter-in-law got ready to leave Moab to return to her homeland. Since with her two daughters-in-law, she set out from the place where she had been living and they took the road that would lead them back to Judea. Mm -hmm. Oh my, 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 my. Now we're looking at this text and Ruth chapter one, verse six through seven that Apostle Herbie has just read. And let's look at the overview of the context of this. Um, we, we've got to understand, let's, let's just give it um, some backdrop here. Verse one through five, because we're starting at six and seven. Verse one through five, we're dealing with uh, Elimelech, um, which was Naomi or Naomi's husband, mm -hmm. which had died in Moab. Mm -hmm. um, not only did she lose her husband, but she lost her two sons in Moab. Uh, we're going to wake this thing up this morning. We're going to help you today. So we begin to see that um, on this overview that we begin to understand that her husband's name represented my God is king, my God. Uh, and of course, we've already said that Naomi or Naomi's name represents my pl um, pleasantness. Um, her and her husband in verse one through two, we begin to understand that they had moved to Moab. Uh, in verse three, we begin to understand that her husband, Elimelech, um, he died. Uh, remember, Elimelech means my God is king. Come on. Mm -hmm. So we begin to understand that this woman, pleasantness, Naomi, eh? come on, somebody. Her husband, Elimelech, had died. Her husband, whose name meant my God is king, had died. Uh, Naomi was left alone with her two sons, Malone and Shilion. So then in verse three, that was verse three. In verse four, we begin to see that the two sons had married, that had married Moabite women. One, Malone, had married Ruth and the other, Chilion, had married Orpha. Uh, then we begin to see that 10 years down the line, then we jump forward. 10 years down the line, later, Naomi's two sons die. My God. And in verse 5, we begin to see Naomi is left without her husband, Elimelech. Mm. And then she's also left without her two sons, Malon and Chilion. Mm. Naomi is both a widow and she is also motherless now. We're going somewhere this morning, y'all. All she has are her two daughters that were given to her by her two sons, which are also now widows. We look at Ruth chapter four, verse 10 in the NLT, and it says, and with the land I have acquired Ruth, the Moabite widow of Milan, to be my wife. Huh. This way, she can have a son to carry on the family name of her dead husband and to inherit the family property here in his hometown. You are all witnesses. We're talking about Boaz right here. See, we're, we're, we've got to understand something. In this season, what God is saying is he's sending a Naomi your way. Come on. 
-hmm. He's sending a Paul your way. Mm -hmm. He's sending an Elijah your way. But you've got to be willing that no matter what it takes, that you're going to submit and you're going to go where they're taking you. Yes, Lord. Because it's all a part of the process mm -hmm. of what God is doing in your life today. Naomi began to understand here in verse 6 when she says that she had heard in Moab that the Lord had blessed her people back in, Ju in Judah. He was giving them good crops again. Everything was flourishing again. So Naomi and Naomi made up her mind that, you know what? It's time for me to leave Moab and to go back to where I came from, my homeland. Because I have not prospered here, but I've lost greatly. I've lost my husband. I'm a widow. I've lost my two sons, my only two sons, and now I'm motherless. So all that I have resides back uh, in Judah. I've got to go back home. See, sometimes we mess up, we jump, we go and we do things that we think are going to be conducive. And God is saying, but I didn't tell you to go to Moab. I told you to stay here in your own home. I told you to stay here where I raised you up at, where people knew you then, but they're going to see the God in you now on, that I am. Uh, see, sometimes we run from things and we should be running to things. Come on, mm. come on. Now. Don't run from where you came from, baby. Stay where God has planted you. If God has planted you and you are growing spiritually and you allow the enemy, you allow witchcraft, you allow Jezebel to come in to uproot you and to keep you from walking in your promise, then if that is on you. Why? Because you need to learn how to stay planted. You need to learn how to submit to spiritual authority. You need to learn how to get rid of that spirit of pride, that spirit of arrogance, that spirit of I can't nobody tell me nothing. The devil is a liar and God is not going to use you in that state. Repent. So then Naomi begins to say in verse seven, I'm getting ready to go back. I'm going back home to Bethlehem, to Judah. I'm going back home to where I came from because now they're prospering. Now they're being blessed. Now they've got all of these things going on. So guess what? I'm going back home for where I came from because you know what? It's got to be better than this. It's got to be better than this. See, we got to understand something. There's an old saying that the, green, the grass is not, uh, not always greener on the other side. You may look over into someone else's pasture and they gra their grass appears to be greener than the church that you're at. It may be greener than the ministry you're connected to. It may appear to be. But baby, can I tell you that it's just a facade many times. We will jump. We will hop. We won't remain grounded. We don't want to remain planted. We don't want anyone to tell us nothing because we want to know everything. When spiritual leaders have a backbone and spiritual leaders don't play the foolishness or go down the road with the rigmarole, people get offended. They can't handle you because you're too real and too raw, baby. When you're real and raw, guess what? You have made up your mind that for God I live and for God I die. And whatever it may cost me, whomever it may cost me, God, I'm going to stay right here. We're going to see what happens when people learn how to submit. When people learn how to become humble and obedient and submissive to spiritual authority. We're going to learn that on today, people. Ruth chapter 1, verse 8 through 9. But on the way, Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go back to your mother's home and may the Lord reward you for your kindness to your husband and to me. Now it said, may the Lord bless you mm -hmm. with the security of another marriage. Mm -hmm. Then she kissed them goodbye mm -hmm. and they all broke down and weep. Now listen. Look at Naomi. Naomi made up her mind. She already knew I'm going back home. I'm going back to where I came from. I'm going back to my homeland. I'm going back to my country. I'm going back to where God has bought me from. Baby, listen, I'm going back to where everybody seems to be flourishing. Mm -hmm. At one point, everything was drying up. The crops were drying up. Nothing was being produced. Nothing was being conducive. But all of a sudden, see, people fail to understand. When you see things dying, 
it is then that it begins to produce more fruit. Mm. Ah, we're going somewhere this morning, y'all. Hang in there with me. We're going somewhere. We fail to understand that when God puts his people in a cave, he does not put you there to die, but he puts you there to multiply. Come on, come he on, puts come you on. there to increase. Yes. He puts you there to be processed. He puts you there because he said, ah, in this season, son, or in this season, daughter, I need your ears inclined to heaven. I need your mind focused on me. I don't need you listening to nothing else. I don't need you watching nothing else. I know people have wondered, why have I been MIA off my social media? Do I have them? Yes, I do. I even deleted, deactivated Twitter. Why? Because Twitter is not the one for me. I'm going to leave that right there. Listen, I kept up my Facebook pages. I kept up my Instagrams. I kept up my LinkedIn. And I got to a place. I told this awesome apostle that me and my husband love and honor very much for the all that's on his head. I told him, I says, I says, I, I don't even want to do social media anymore. I've gotten to the place that I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. See, because it's something awesome when God has allowed you not to just see the people, but to see their hearts. And I got sick and tired of the lies. I got sick and tired of people not being encouraged. I got sick and tired of people being torn out. I got sick and tired of every time I turn around, there's a new apostle, there's a new prophet, there's a new evangelist, there's a new pastor. Everybody's teaching on something. And I told God, but God, they're messing people up. They're hurting people. They're contaminating people. Why did I say that people of God? Because a lot of these same people that stay on social media, and I want to know if you're an apostle or a prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher, how is it that you can hear from God when you always on social media? How is it that God can truly speak directly to you when you're always being a busybody, how is it that you're listening to so many voices? How can you truly decipher who is God? Who is speaking in the authority, in the office, in the grace, in the gift of God? How can you know? And this man of God told me, this awesome apostle told me, he says, but if you delete your Facebook pages, if you delete it, a lot of people, a lot of people won't be blessed. He said some other things, but I'm going to leave it like that. Because see, everything is not for social media. That's another thing. If you if you have a prophetic gift uh, of, of the, the spirit of prophecy, uh, if you are walking in the office of the prophet, everything that God tells you in the secret place, everything that God tells you is not to be openly spoken and prophesied you got to know the timing you got to know the season why because you can mess somebody up with early release you can mess somebody up with premature release you can mess somebody up because everything that god shows you everything that god tells you is not for you to jump on social media and try to prophesy i'm going on naomi had given them a way of escape Naomi had gotten to the place where she began to tell them, I'm going back over here. But you know what? You all don't have to go with me. You can go back to your mother's house. You're still young. God may still, I, I pray that the Lord reward you for your kindness and give you husbands. Why did she tell them that? Because they were still young. Verse nine, that Apostle Herbert has read for us. She began to say that, may the Lord bless you with the security of another marriage, another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye. Come on, somebody. She released them. But they began to break down. They began to cry. They began to weep. Can you just see these women? They know that their mother-in-law, Naomi, has lost everything. They broke down. They're crying. They're weeping. And then all of a sudden, she's telling them, but I'm letting you go. There's an old saying, if you truly love something, let it go. If it comes back, it was meant to be. If it doesn't, it never was. 
So you know what? Stop looking for people to accept you. Stop looking for people to love you unconditionally because you love them unconditional. Why? Because you have the love of Jesus Christ. You have the heart of the Father. But you have to understand, men and women of God, everybody is not going to love you like Jesus loves you. Amen. Everybody's not going to reverence you. Everybody's not going to treat you the way that the Father, the Heavenly Father treats you. Ruth chapter 1, verse 10 through 12. Notice said, we want to we want to go with you to your people. But Naomi replied, why should you go on with me? Can I still give birth to another son mm -hmm. who could grow up to be your husband? Mm -hmm. Twelve said, no, my daughter, return to your parents' home, for I am too old to marry again. And even if it were possible and I were to get married tonight, and be a son, then what? Now, here we go. Ruth and Orpha. I want y'all to say with us now. Roll with us. Ruth and Orpha, all of a sudden, they begin to cry. Remember in the preceding verse, verse 9. They begin to, to weep. They begin to hold on. I can just imagine these women. And then all of a sudden, Naomi begins to tell them, why should you go with me? In other words, I don't have anything to offer. I'm too old to get pregnant. I'm too old to have other sons. And if I were to have other sons, are you going to stay and wait until they're old enough to grow up for you to marry them and to raise up seeds to carry on the name and the legacy? Are you really going to do that? In other words, are you really willing to stay in the trenches? Are you really willing to bleed when I bleed? Are you really willing to go through when I go through? Are you really willing to suffer when I suffer? Uh, are you really, really willing to die when I die, in the very place that I die? See, people have it twisted. They're looking for the next best thing. They're looking for the next best, uh, the next person that a professor, they're an apostle, they're a prophet, they're evangelist, pastor, and teacher. They're looking for gifts. They gifted, but they're not graced. They're gifted, but they can't show up to church on time. They're gifted, but they can't submit to spiritual leadership. They're gifted, but they still got a nasty attitude. They're gifted, but they still cussing, still lying, still fornicating, still doing all kind of, of malice of things, but they're gifted. Pastors, stop looking for gifted people and look for people that are willing to die to their flesh. Stop looking for the gifted ones. Why? Because I said this a while back in one of my books that God had given me. Affirmation without accountability produces Absalom. Mm -hmm. And remember, Absalom was the son of David. And Absalom wanted to take what his daddy had received from the Lord. How is it that the very people that you try to raise up the very people that you pour into, the very people that you sacrifice for, the very people that you lay prostrate on the floor for, the very people that you pray through, the very people that you're interceding for, those are the Absalons that's trying to come for your head. But God, mm -hmm. because they failed to understand, the enemy might have had a plot and a plan. But God has a purpose. Come on, come on now. And the purpose of God will be fulfilled over anything else. Yes, Lord. It's not going to happen on the watch of God. It's not going to happen to the people of God. God is doing a new thing in this season. See, we got to understand something. She still began to tell them, Naomi, in verse 12, no daughters go back home to your parents' house. Go back home, marry again. You still have the possibility of being, of being a, a wife. You still have the possibility of bearing sons. You still have the possibility, the sons, remember, carry on the name, uh, the family's name. You still have a possibility because you're still young. You're still fertile. You're still beautiful. You have your whole life ahead of you. But I, I have emptied out everything that I had. Everything that Naomi had, she had emptied it out. She emptied it out on her husband, Elimelech. She emptied it out on her sons, Milan and Chilion. She even emptied it out on Ruth, and she emptied it out on Orpah. And all she had was God. All she had was a promise. 
All she had was the word, my God. See, we fail to understand John 12 and 24 tells us, King James Version, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. 25 says, he that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Listen, we need to understand people. See, when Ruth saw destiny, Orpah saw despair. Mm -hmm. See, Ruth was that very seed that was ready to fall to the ground and die. That you know what? Whatever she going through, I'm going through. I'm going to ride this thing out with her. If she going through, I'm going through. If she's hurting, I'm hurting. If she's bleeding, I'm bleeding. If she's hungry, I'm hungry. If she has nowhere to stay and she's homeless, so am I. I'm going to take it on. Why? Because they had come to a place where Ruth was so serious about her mother-in-law Naomi. And she said to herself, I'm tied to her. I'm knitted to her. Why? Because remember, they had become one with her seeds. Uh, her son Malone, her son Chilion. And because they had become one with the seeds of Ruth, her son, uh, Naomi's sons, Ruth did. All of a sudden, Ruth and, and Orpah both married. Ruth and Orpah both became one with their husband. But see, listen, sometimes we have to understand. God was several things. See, because when Chilion died, it, it was done for Orpah. Orpah wasn't, she wasn't about to struggle. Orpah wasn't about to get in the trenches. Orpah didn't want to get dirty. Orpah didn't want to be hungry. Orpah didn't want to be homeless. We're going to go somewhere with Orpah today because there's a lot of Orphas that people are calling sons and daughters. There's a lot of Orphas that are spiritual bastards. There's a lot of Orphas that are in it to get the oil that's on the head, but they don't want to submit to the anointing in the oil that's on the head. We're going somewhere. We're going to go on. All right, let's go to this next slide. Go. I'm preaching too hard, y'all. I'm trying to stay calm. All right, Ruth chapter 1, verse 13 to 14. Would you wait for them to grow up and refuse to marry someone else? No, of course not, my daughters. Things are far more bitter for me than for you because the Lord himself has raised his first against me. For he said, and again, they weep together. And Oprah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clings tightly mm -hmm. to Naomi. See, we need to understand something. A lot of times, the Lord will send a people. The Lord will send people from different places, from different cities, different countries, different cultures. Because remember the word of God tells us we're many members, but we're one body. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter your dialect. It doesn't matter your culture. There is no caste in this system here in the kingdom. There's no big eyes. There's no little use. But you know what? The word of God tells us that we are all created equally. Mm -hmm. And we need to understand that. See, I don't know about anybody else. But if you're in ministry, you need to go to God today after this message and you need to say, you can begin to speak it right now if you need to. Lord, I need you to send some roots. I need you to send some people who are willing to go through. I need you to send some people that if I like, they like. If I'm suffering, they're suffering. If I'm hurting, they're hurting. If I'm bleeding, they're bleeding. If I'm having like, they're going through the like with me. They're not trying to be so prideful, so arrogant, so puffed up but they know how to walk in humility. They're living a life of holiness. They're living a life of righteousness. The word of God says, be ye holy for I am holy. Come on, yes, So how is it in this hour and this season, we got two choices, holiness or hell. That's it. There is no in between. We're going to live right or we're going to die and we're going to lift our eyes in hell. Simple as that. Simple as that. I'm going on. You ready, Apostle? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. When we look at this in, in first in Ruth chapter one, verse 13 to 14, Ruth is still, or Naomi is still talking to Ruth and Orpah. And she's asking them the questions. Okay, will you just wait for me to have other children for them to grow up for you to, them, you to marry them? Will you do this, my daughters? No, you have your whole life ahead of me. 
You have your whole life. You don't have to stay here with me. You don't, I don't have anything else to give you. You know, this is the time in verse 14. Here's Orpha. I want y'all to catch this. Here's Orpha. A lot of y'all got some Orphas attached to you. See, Orpha is just like Lot. Abraham was a wealthy man. Abraham was being blessed. Abraham had, was, had, had a lot that God had given him. But Abraham could not go move forward into his destiny of abundance and overflow. Why? Because he had his kinsmen, Lot. See, some of y'all got some Lots. Some of y'all have some orphans. On, and today you need to release them. Today you need to sever it. Today you need to kiss them goodbye and move forward in the things of God. Mm -hmm. uh, verse 14, here's orphan. Here she go. Orphan don't manifest it. See, the, listen, the spiritual bastards will show up. Uh, and this is what asked, this is what Orpah did. 14. And again, they wept together and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. But Ruth, even here on this slide, we have it. Orpah don't turn her back. Orpah walking away. Orpah saying to herself, I'm free. I, I'm moving on. I'm done with this. It's time for me to go. But Ruth clung on to Naomi. She clung on, the word says. In other words, does that not sound like Jacob? When the word says that Jacob wrestled with the angel all night long until the breaking of day. And Jacob began to say to the angel, I'm not going to let you go to your blessing. See, I can see that Ruth was having an epiphany, a, a moment, a, a revelation of Naomi may not look like she got much to give. My mother-in-law may not have the years that she used to have. She may be older in age. She may have emptied out everything on, that on, she on, had continue, that continue. God had given her. But I can imagine that in Ruth's mind, Ruth said to herself, but whatever it is that she's got, on, I'm going to hang on to it. I'm going to hold on to Naomi because she still got more to give. Mm. Yes, ah, help me, Jesus. Genesis 1 and 1 says, King James translation. Oh, Gen Genesis 1 and 11. Thank you, Apostle. Huh? You know I get off the cliff. Genesis 1 and 11 in the King James translation says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seeds, and the fruit trees yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself. Ah, uh, seed in itself upon the earth, and it is so. Listen, let's look at the NLT. We're going somewhere this morning, y'all. The NLT translation says, go ahead, Apostle. Then God said, let the land sprout with vegetation, mm -hmm. every sort of seed-bearing plant mm -hmm. and trees that grow seed-bearing fruit. Mm -hmm. The seed would then produce the kind of plants mm -hmm. and trees from which they came, mm -hmm. and, and that is what happened. So listen, we need to understand something, people. The word of God is telling us that a seed produces after its own kind. Mm -hmm. I want y'all to understand it's not you leader. It's not you man of God. It's not you woman of God. You want me to tell you what it is? It's the seed that is producing. What is that? It's the intent of the hearts of the people. The very ones that were the orphans, the very ones who thought they were doing something, the very ones who thought that they were talking behind your back, lying on you, trying to kill your godly character. The very ones who put their mouths on you. And the Lord told you, he said, yeah, I showed you. You knew who they were before you even tried to help them. You knew who they were. You knew they were broken. And you knew I had a temporary assignment. See, because there's lifetime and there's seasonal people. Mm. You knew that when the season was up, you were going to be able to release them and release them in love and let them go. Why? Because God says you saw their hearts. Yes. You saw their hearts. And a lot of people, they don't always start out like that leaders, men and women of God. But they allow Jezebels. They allow these evil spirits, these yes, divisive God. spirits, these envious spirits, these jealous spirits that hate to see love and unity and oneness. They want to have it all about them. They want it to be about them. They want their attention on them. That's Jezebel. Jezebel is the only one that seek all of this. A witch and a warlock. Remember, Jezebel is non-gender specific. We need to understand. We going on, y'all. We get there. We get there. We pray that this is blessing you. 
Ruth chapter 1, verse 15 through 16. Look, Naomi said to her, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her God. You should do the same. 16 said, but Ruth replied, don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. All right, listen, listen. <clears throat> Ruth had come into covenant with Naomi. Mm -hmm. Ruth had come into oneness with Naomi. Listen, when you think about covenant, think of Jonathan and David. Uh, Jonathan went against the norm of being the successor of the King Saul. Come on, because on. remember the kingdom that Saul had, Jonathan was to inherit it. On, he was next in line. But Jonathan jumped right. Come on, somebody. And Jonathan said, I see in David what I like seeing in my father. Come on. Mm -hmm. My father may be king, but my father is jacked up. My father may be king, but my father has the wrong heart. My father may be king, but my father has the wrong mentality. My father may be king, but my father does not have a heart for God. But what I see in David, I see a heart that's after God. I see submission. Mm -hmm. I see loyalty. I see humility in David. This is Jonathan talking, y'all. I can imagine Jonathan begin to say, David is a king in the making. Mm -hmm. David is the successor to my father's throne. David has been chosen by God because he is God's anointed. At one point, so was Saul. But Saul messed up. He was disobedient. Saul lost everything. Lord, help us. Don't be Saul. Listen, Ruth was so serious. I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to turn back. In other words, wherever you go, I go. Wherever you live, I live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Mm -hmm. Remember, Ruth and Orpah were for Moab. They were Moabites. Come on, son. Come on, on. They had left their gods, their idols. They had married into the family of Ruth, of, of Naomi and Elimelech. And they had gotten to the place that they left idol gods and they came into the knowledge of who the one true living God is. Mm. It's not Muhammad. It's not all of these other gods, baby, but there's only one God, Come on, now. one heaven, one hell, and one church. Let's help that right there. One church, one church. God is coming back for one church without a wrinkle or spot, a purified church. Mm, Jesus, help me. We look at Orpah. Orpah saw despair when she looked at Naomi. Orpah didn't see what Ruth saw with Naomi. Orpah is just like many opportunists today. Orpah. Orpah was in it for what she could get. Mm -hmm. She was connected to Naomi, but she never came in covenant with Naomi. Somebody better come catch on, this. Come on, come on now. What did Orpah see in Naomi? Orpah saw the struggle. Orpah saw the loss. Orpah saw the suffering. Orpah saw the despair. Orpah saw hardship. Yes, Orpah saw shame. Orpah saw light. Orpah saw herself and said, uh-uh, I can't go down this road with her. I can't ride this out with her. She got too much stuff that's happening to her. I'm still young enough to get another man. I'm still young enough to have children. I need a husband. Orpah saw herself, a young woman, who had been widowed by Naomi's son. She saw that Naomi was a victim in her mind of her circumstances. She said to herself, Orpha, I don't see myself with a life of singleness like Naomi mm -hmm. and in widowhood. I can't do it. See, Orpha saw despair because that's what Orpha had in her heart. Yes, Lord. Orpha didn't have connection to her. She didn't have a covenant to Naomi. Baby, she got to the place where when her husband died, it's time for me to go. I got to do better than this. I can't go through like this. I can't be, I, I'm young. I still can get married. I can still have children. See, there's a lot of people right now in ministry, professing Christian, got the same mentality. But let's look at Ruth. 
Ruth saw her destiny. Orpha saw despair, but Ruth saw her destiny. Mm -hmm. Ruth looked upon her mother-in-law, Naomi, with love. She looked upon her with compassion, with respect, with mercy, and with grace. She trusted Naomi with her very life. And she trusted Naomi to lead her in the right direction. Ruth was in it for love. And she wanted to have her to take, she wanted to take care of her mother-in-law because remember, Naomi is up in age now. Mm -hmm. See, this is what's wrong with the people of God today. Are we seeing about the widows? Are we seeing about the father, the children? On, are we seeing about the homeless? Are we seeing about those that are destitute? Are we seeing about the widows? Are we taking care of the elderly? We got to do better, people of God. Ruth came into being one flesh with Naomi's son, but she also joined herself spiritually to the mother-in-law, Naomi. She was in a covenant relationship with Naomi. Mm -hmm. She had that mentality, if she bleed, I bleed with her. Where she go, I go. Where she live, I live. Mm -hmm. Her people will be my people. Her God will be my God. The next one to tell you, wherever you die, I will die and be buried by you. That's the next verse coming up after this. Ruth was not there to take from Naomi, but she was there to give to Naomi. See, sometimes leaders, men and women of God, people connect to you because you're blessed. They see the glory, but they don't understand your story. They see what God has elevated you, but they don't know the hell you had to go through to get there. They see your humility, but they don't understand that you had to die to yourself. They don't understand all of this. See, people are getting to a place where they're looking for platforms. They're looking for recognition. On, no. They're looking for notoriety, but they're still jacked up. They still got a nasty attitude. They still lying, gossiping, backbiting, talking about people. They don't even know how to treat their spouses. But when they get before the people of God, oh, praise God. The, uh, and, yes, Lord, men and women. But they live in hell in the house. The spouses can't live in peace. The children seeing this and they're going to re reproduce it in their own relationships. Get yourselves together. God is not going to be mocked. God has had enough with your foolishness. Yep, no. Sit your hips down somewhere and get saved. Sit down somewhere and get healed, delivered, set free, and allow God to restore you. Before you go out there and mess some other people up. God is sick of the foolishness. God is sick of the craziness. All this, listen, let me tell y'all something. I got all kind of giving platforms, Apostle Herbie and I. When I say I, I mean us, we are one. We got all kind of giving platforms. When I get on there, I put, I put cash out up a few times, I think, for my birthday anniversary or something on Facebook. Other than that, I don't put that up. If you want to know, go to our ministry. Go Listen, we got all of these texts to give all of this. Listen, the word of God is free. There's nothing wrong with sowing into the word of God. There's nothing wrong with being a blessing to the men and the women of God who work. Because 1 Timothy 5.18 tells us that we are worthy of our highs. It says, muzzle not the ox that's treading out the corn. Don't muzzle it. Don't stop it, but be a blessing to it. Pray for him. Intercede for him. If you can give, give to it. Give to what God is doing. But make sure when you sow in seeds that you're sowing it on good ground, that you're looking for a harvest, Amen. that you know that God's got his hand on their lives, yes, that they live what they preach. My God, that they say for real. I'm going back over here. Mm. Ruth saw in Naomi. She saw love. She saw survival. She saw resolve. She saw determination. She saw strength. She saw perseverance. She saw that she was an overcomer. She saw new life. She saw the wisdom. She saw the humility. She saw a covenant. She saw a mother. She saw a mentor. And she saw a protector. Mm. Her future was as a widow by gleaning from her mother-in-law spiritually. spiritually. Naomi gave her something spiritual. It was a spiritual food. It was a spiritual transfer. It was a spiritual love and an outward love. 
See, we need to understand something. Stop looking at people hollering about those are my sons and my daughters. Stop looking at people and hollering about, oh, you know, that's my father. That's my spiritual father. That's my spiritual mother. Stop doing all this crazy stuff. If God sent them to you, you're going to know it. Our apostolic network is one sound global alliance. Why is that OSGA? Why? Because the Lord told Apostle Herbie and I in the secret place. He said, when they come, you're going to know them by their sound. You're going to know them. It doesn't matter the dialect. It doesn't matter the culture, but we're going to make one sound, one sound, one mind, one accord, book of Acts. So we've got Ruth that's gleaning from Naomi spiritually and emotionally. Then later she begins to glean from her mother-in-law kinsman Boaz's field physically. Ruth saw in Naomi a woman not defined by her circumstances. See, some of you are going through. Some of you, people are looking at you. They're laughing at you. They're making mockery of you. They think that you're dead. You went in the cave. You disappeared. You know, you're not on social media talking about everything. You're not on social media giving everybody a, 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 a point by point play of what God is telling you, what God is showing you and what God is doing. So, Confused, they're discombobulated. But remember the word of God said, he will take the foolish things to confound the wise. Wow. See, this is why Apostle and Herb and I have been doing and moving the word. We're moving strategically and pioneering globally for the kingdom of God because everybody that's connected to you is not praying for you. Some of them are praying against you. Come on, come on. Mm. Some of them are interceding. Some of them are, are casting spells. Some of them are casting words. But the Lord began to tell me years ago, he said, every, every mouth, every mouth, everything that they speak negative about you, my daughter, my son, he says, everything that they speak, they themselves were reaping. So you know what? That's why I keep moving. That's why he keeps moving. That's why we keep submitting to God. That's why we keep obeying the will of God. That's why we keep strategically looking forward to God and killing everything else, every voice around us, everything that's going on. All of this stuff going on in the world, baby, pray for it strategically. We see this stuff popping around here globally. The chaos, the division, the hatred, the lawlessness, all this crazy stuff. Why? Because in the realm of spirit, great and mighty things are transitioning. The womb of the spirits is palpitating. God is birthing forth in this season like never before. I'm telling you, if I be a woman of God, if I be a daughter of Zion, uh, hear me when I say this real well today. God is moving greatly, strategically, and he's doing it for his manifested glory to hit this earth and his manifested fire to hit this earth and burn up everything that is not like God. God has the last say. God is going to have the last word and God shall be glorified throughout the world, throughout the nation, throughout the earth realm. My God, rock or show. Thank you, God. God is shifting. God is moving. God is revealing. God is unveiling. God is exposing. God is pulling down. God has the ability to set up kings and remove kings. God has the ability to take the heart of the king that's in his hand and to turn it. Why are we seeing all of this stuff manifest? Because you all are not praying. You all are not interceding like you should. You need to come into unity. You need to come into oneness. There is no white church. There is no black church. There is no Spanish church. There is no cultural churches. But God's church is everyone. He's no respecter of persons. Help me, Jesus. God says unity, unity, love. By loving kindness have I drawn thee. Loving kindness have I drawn thee, saith the Lord thy God. Mm. She was a woman not defined by her circumstances. She was a woman that had gone through much loss, but she was still standing. She was a woman that had suffered great loss, but yet she stood strong in her faith. Apostle, you want to hit those? She was a woman that was able to leave Moab, the place of her greatest loss, and go back to Bethlehem.
to her destiny. As you read through this story about Ruth, you might want to use this list of meaning to help put the story together. In verse chapter 15 and 22, Ruth, Ruth, her, her, um, Moabitess, Moabitess <coughs> daughter-in-law, attached herself in, in, indissolubly, indissolubly to Naomi and to her, and to two widows, sadly reduced in circumstances, journey on foot to Bethlehem, which they reach at the, at the, commencement of of the body's harvest <clears throat> listen some of you need to understand you need someone to ride you ride with you not ride you someone to ride with you you need people that are ready to go where no man has gone before you need people that are willing to get down in the trenches you need people that are willing to sacrifice you need people that will pray and intercede that will fast that will turn some plates down that will say wherever you go i go Wherever you live, I live. Your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. Whatever it takes. They need to listen. You need people with a made up mind. You need people with a made up heart. You need people with the right attitude. You need people that has the agape love of Jesus Christ. You need people that are Christ minded. Amen. Ruth chapter 1 verse 17 to 19. Wherever you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely <clears throat> if I allow anything but death to separate us. 18 says, when Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she, had, she said nothing more. 19, so, so the two of them continue on their journey. When they came to Bethlehem, the entire town was excited by their arrival. It is really Naomi, the woman asked. Listen, <clears throat> we need to understand something. Ruth was so serious. Remember what Jonathan, when he came in covenant with David, Jonathan took everything he disrobed. Is the easiest way I can say it. I'm using that analogy. Jonathan disrobed. Jonathan gave up the robe that represents the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Jonathan gave up his sword that represents the word. Mm -hmm. Jonathan gave up the belt that gird up his loins. Jonathan gave up all of these stuff, the breastplate. He gave up all of his armor. Kingly armor. What did Jonathan, what did that represent spiritually? When we see Jonathan take everything he had on as the successor, the next king in waiting, huh, and give it to, to, to David, the shepherd boy, David, the harpist, the psalmist, we begin to understand what Jonathan was doing. In the natural, it looked like he just wanted him to have armor that fit. Because remember, Saul's armor did not fit David. Because God says, I'm doing a new thing in this season. Mm -hmm. What somebody else is doing, it's not going to fit you. What someone else is saying, it's not going to fit you. What everybody else is going around trying to do, it's not going to fit you. Why? Because what I have for you, men and women of God, it's Taylor May. Come on Baby, up. what I have for you is going to fit. When you step in the shoes, your feet going to feel well. When you pick up the sword, That's guess it. what? The word is going to work it. like it needs to. That's God it. said the revelation, the knowledge, the understanding, and the comprehension is already there. Yes, love. We began to understand something. When Jonathan was taken off and disrobing all of this stuff, he wasn't just giving David his outer garments, but he was giving David the throne. He had abdicated the throne. Mm. Somebody better catch this today. The very people that think they're getting ahead, God said, now, baby, I'm having them to turn it over to you. Everything they've labored for, they're going to be sowing into what you're doing for the yes, kingdom. Lord. Everything that you went through, baby, when you were dying in the cave, when you were being processed in the cave, when you were hurting in the cave, when you were crying out in the cave, yes, when you were transitioning in the cave, when you were laboring spiritually in the cave, God said that there was an echo. Oh, but it was so there was an echo in the cave. And when the echo was coming back, you were sending it forth. And I was reverberating in the cave. And every time you go in, I begin to dispatch fresh oil, fresh anointing, fresh glory, fresh fire upon you. I processed you in the midst of your enemies. Amen. The yes, word of God tells us in Psalms 23 and 5 
that he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. What does that say? Baby, my enemies have to be present while God is blessing me. Because God is allowing people to be at the table where he has set out the spread. Where you're going to feast. But they're going to be invited to dine. But they're going to have to leave. My God, he wants them to be present for your coronation. He wants them to be present for the fresh oil. He wants them to be present to see how he's ascending you in this season. But God says they're just here as spectators. Let them run with what I have done. Let them run and tell what it looks like when you die to your flesh and allow me to live through you. Yes, yes. Ruth got to a place. Now the way you die, I will die. Where you're buried, I want to be buried. If I should leave you, may the Lord punish me. Nothing but death is going to separate me. See, that's what sons and daughters do. When you're going through leaders discipleship, when you're going through mentorship, if they're truly your disciple and God has truly put this relationship into covenant with you, these people into covenant with you, they get that mentality. That it doesn't matter, even though my leaders may not be telling me everything God is saying. I know them and I know their character. I know their hearts and I know that they're serious about the things of God. I'm not going to leave them. Why? Because, baby, it ain't about a building. It ain't about no uh, uh, connections and people throwing your name around and putting you on a program. It's about God being glorified. Amen. It's about, guess what? God begins to weed out some stuff. God begins to move some stuff. God begins to remove some people. Why? Because God told Apostle Herbert, I'm lightening your load because you're global. You may be doing some stuff virtual, but you're global because you hit the ground running in the midst of the pandemic. I birthed you forward globally. And we have some awesome men and women of God that Lord has allowed us to be connected to. And we honor each and every one of you in every country around this world that God has sent to be a part of the now. We love you all. We thank you for your prayers. We thank you for interceding. We thank you for your oneness. We thank you that you are kingdom. Mm. Ruth got to a place where she says, let us go. I'm staying with you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where we go. It doesn't matter where we live. It doesn't matter what we eat. It doesn't matter if we're homeless. It doesn't matter if we got to lay outside. It doesn't matter if we have to go into a cave. It doesn't matter if you have to get into the trench. I'm getting in with you. If you got to be thrown in the pit, I'm going in the pit. If they put you in part of us house, the house of slander, I'm going there too. So when they start talking about you and God begins to raise you up, when they get to lying on you and trying to attack your godly character and saying all sorts of lies about you, I'll in a part of us house with you. That house of slander, that place of slander. I'll go to the prison. I'll go there and serve why? Because the word of God says your gifts will make room for you and bring you before great men, bring you before great kings. My God, that thing powerful, y'all. We almost done three more verses. I hope we know this is blessing because it's blessing me. It's blessing apostles. It's blessed us all week. <clears throat> Ruth 1, chapter 1, verse 20 to 21. Don't call me Naomi. She responded. Instead, call me Mara, mm -hmm. for the for the Almighty has made life very bitter for me. Twenty one say I went away full, but the Lord has brought me home empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord when the Lord has caused me <clears throat> to suffer, <clears throat> and 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 the Almighty has sent such tragedy upon me? Listen. Naomi is talking and Naomi has gotten to the place where she no longer wants to be called Naomi because of her trials, because of her tribulations, because of what God had to allow her to walk through those valleys of the shadow of death. The things that she had gone through, the things that she had endured, the things that she had to, had to come out of. 
the place of death, the place of lack, the place of 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 um, grief, the place of despair, the place of 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 no longer being a wife but being a widow, no, no longer having her sons but being motherless, other than her daughter-in-law. And still, yet she only had the one left. And she said, "Instead, call me Mara, because the Lord Almighty has dealt with her and made life very bitter for her." And she began to say that she went away full, but the Lord has bought her home empty. Many of you have felt that you lost something during the pandemic. You lost something in this last stretch, the last three years. I hear God saying the last three to five years. Many of you say, God, I, it was better than this. I had more people around me. I had all of this stuff happening. But the Lord says, but everybody that was attached to you was not connected to you. They were just attached and attached things must be removed and they can be removed. Huh. Attached people and attached things are not covenant. Hmm. They're not a part of your destiny. So God says, I had to move them to lighten your load because you will never ascend a mountain carrying unnecessary weight, unnecessary warfare, and unnecessary people. Everybody doesn't have that mentality of growth. Everybody doesn't have that mentality of kingdom. Everybody doesn't have that mentality. Do you know what, God? I'm going to this next level. I know it's been hard. I know it hasn't been easy. I know they've gone through much. I know they've been quiet. I know they haven't. I know God is dealing with them. But behind the scenes, God is saying to many of you, learn a lesson. Take a, take a page out of Joseph's book. Joseph, Joseph talked, not Jason, Joe, Jacob, excuse me, Joseph talked too soon. He released what God showed him too soon. And what happened was his own brothers betrayed him. The Lord says sometimes we talk so much because what God has shown is such such revelation, knowledge and understanding that you want to share it with them because you love them. But God says the same one you share with, the same bricks that you've collected, they take the bricks and go and build in other places. God is saying in this season, sometimes we've got to allow it to grow, allow it to manifest. Allow me to bring it into fruition. Allow it to mature. Because remember that the, the enemy is always after the young gifts. He's always after those who are untrained, unlearned. He's always after the immature Christian. Why? Because they're still babies. They're still learning. They're still growing. The enemy will always try to kill you in your infancy. Yes, Lord. Before you begin to mature and come into your identity your kingdom identity. When that kingdom DNA turns on, the enemy knows I don't messed up. I can't get them now. It's, they're too far gone. They know too much now. They understand too much now. God has revealed too much now. So then we go on to verse 22. So Naomi returned <clears throat> from Moab accompanied by her daughter-in-law Ruth, mm -hmm. the young Moabite woman they arrived in bethlehem in the late spring at the beginning of the barley harvest ain't it something how the lord sent them there and when he sent them there he had already prepared a place for them you know you think about whenever the lord truly sends you somewhere he's always going to have the place prepared you know the, the he sent the prophet and the woman built the the, the room on the top of the house. She put the bed. She put a candlestick there. Um, one was sent by the, the, the river, the Terrace, um, to the brook. The brook dried up after he stayed there for a while. He was able to drink from the brook, and, and the ravens came, and they bought him um, meat by day. And, you know, we, we look at all of these things, and then we begin to look at when the Lord sent Naomi back home um, to her hometown, and when he sent her there with her Moabite um, daughter-in-law, Ruth, that it was the beginning of the barley harvest. It was beginning of harvest time. So he had already knew, isn't it something how God worked? God knew that Naomi's kinsman was Boaz, that Boaz had a field and that it was harvest time. And that when they got there, they were not wanting or need anything because Boaz going to look out for them. Why? Because they're widows. And if Ruth hadn't gone to the field, the field would have came to Naomi. Somebody better catch come on, that. Come on. Why do I say that? Because Ruth, and Naomi, 
was mother-in-law and daughter-in-law. Mm -hmm. But Boaz was the kinsman of her husband, Elimelech and Naomi. So we begin to understand Boaz was not about to allow the widow of his kinsman, neither one of them, the mother or the daughter-in-law, to suffer and to go hungry because why he had plenty and he was going to be a blessing regardless. But God set that thing up. In Luke 6 and 45, King James translation says, a good man out of the good treasures of his heart, bringing forth that which is good and an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart, bringing forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. See, we need to understand something in this season. We've got, even here in America, we've got an alternative Christianity called Christian nationalism, I think it's called, something like that. But that's not, listen, there is only one Christianity. There is only one God. Come on, somebody. God is a God of love. He is not a God of div division. He is not a God of hate. He is not a God of chaos. He is not a God of racism. He is not a God that thinks that one race is superior to another race. The devil is a liar. And we have people of God have to rise up in this hour. We've got to call right, right, and wrong, wrong. We've got to call sin, sin. And let us in America and all over the world get back to preaching the unadulterated word of God. Not your flesh and not your wickedness, not the divisiveness, not the deception. Preach God. Preach the gospel. Preach on the mountaintops. Preach in the valleys low. Stop leading people into all of this worldly mess in political arenas. Preach God and put the devil to shame. Amen. Amen. Apostle, you want to deal with this up here? Amen. It's still um, the amplifier. amplifier. Mm -hmm. The amplifier. Translation of that. The translation of that. The good man produced what is good and honorable and moral out of the good treasures in the heart, and the evil man produced what is wicked and depraved out of the evil, for his mouth speaks from the overflow <coughs> of his heart. Listen, intrinsically, what is stored up, the very things that's in our heart is going to begin to flow. You know what? You're not going to be popular when you preach truth. You're not going to be popular when you preach the unadulterated gospel. <clears throat> Over seven years ago, I began to unfollow. I began to unfriend people. Why? Because their hearts were revealed. I'm talking apostles. I'm talking prophets. I'm talking evangelists. I'm talking pastors and teachers of the word of God. Men and women of God that I love, all different races, nationalities, everything else. But guess what? When God began to expose their heart, God said, you cannot drink from polluted fountains. You cannot eat from, from contaminated tables. You can't do it. And I won't allow you to do it, daughter. And you know what I did? Cut! I'm not playing with this. I'm not playing with these devils. I'm not playing with these demons. I'm going to remain real, raw, and unapologetic, and I'm going to stand on the word of God no matter what. If you want to unfriend me, unfriend me. Because I'm not going there with you. I'm not going to hell. I refuse to be like Moses. <clears throat> to live, to preach, to teach, to pray, to intercede, intercede, to go to Egypt and set the captive free of over 400 years. And all of a sudden, because of a bunch of stiff-necked, stubborn people that were idol worshippers, we got the spirit of idolatry. Here in America, whenever you worship a man, whenever you worship a movement, whenever you worship a people, it is idolatry. The word of God lets us know that we should have no other God before him. It's also in the Ten Commandments. Thou shall have, the first one, thou shall have no other God before me. Thou shall make no golden image. Idolatry. Jesus. And people are talking about God is, no, no, no. God allowed it to happen. Remember the Israelites, they wanted, a, they wanted a king because everybody else had a king. So the Lord allowed them to have a king, but there were repercussions. Mm -hmm. We're seeing the repercussions in America. Mm -hmm. People, let me tell you the thing, that thing grieved my heart so bad in 2015. <clears throat> I began to see these men and women of God all over in America during the election time. 
I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it. I'm transparent. And if you don't like it, it's, it's okay. I still love you. I'm praying for you. I'm praying that God brings you out of deception and into the marvelous light, out of the darkness into his marvelous light. I began to see people calling in states, all of this stuff. Children of Israel, God began to tell me, he said, you see it. Matthew 24, 24, for the very elect shall be conceived, deceived. For even the very elect will be deceived. This is what I saw, Matthew 24 and 24. And the Lord said, okay, unfollow, unfollow, unfollow. I thought, click, 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 click. The Lord said, some of them going to have to be unfriended, severed in connection. And then the Lord began to tell me, he says, do you see what's happening, my daughter? I said, yes, Lord. This is why you must pray, and this is how you must pray, strategically. And that's what Apostle Herbert and I have been doing. But let me tell y'all something. This is a clarion call, and this is a warning. Every man and woman of God professing that they are God, and they are preaching alternative gospels. They are preaching alternative religions. They are teaching alternative gospels. They are teaching alternative uh, religion. The word of God is here to tell you today. Woe unto you this day. The Lord says, repent now. Repent now or perish. Repent now or perish. Repent now and everything around you is going to start drying up. Repent now. Get it right. Get it right, men and women of God, pastors and leaders, churches and ministries. Get it right. No man, woman, no man nor woman is above God. God is stripping you this day for your disobedience, for your arrogance, for your pride, for your lawlessness, for the chaos that you're causing. God is stripping all over this world. All over this world right now, right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God is stripping you. Be not deceived this day, saith the Lord thy God. Be not deceived. Choose ye this day, saith the Lord thy God, who you will serve. Choose ye this day who you will serve. Lord says, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you to repent. Men and women of God, pastors and leaders, in churches and ministers all over the world, I'm waiting on you to repent. I'm waiting on you to repent. Let us not be like the rich man and Lazarus that we spoke on last Sunday to gain all of this stuff in this natural world through connecting rather than being secular sections and political sections and arenas. Let us not do all of this. Die and go to hell. Moses did all of this stuff, y'all. But the Lord had to allow him to go up to the mountain, look over and see the promised land, but he couldn't enter in. Why? Because he sinned. He allowed himself to get angry. He allowed himself to sit there, strike the rock, to bring forth the water for the people. And because of that act, the Lord had to strip him. He died and he could not enter into his promised land. Lord, help us, Jesus. I want you all to know that names mean something. We've got a few slides here. We're going to deal with the names. And we're almost done, people of God. The meaning of names. For a better understanding in the book of Ruth, Ruth, the meaning of the Hebrew names is especially very informative to you men and women of God. Elimelech means my God is king. Naomi means my pleasantness. Malone means sickness. Chilion means consumption, destruction, wasting. But then when we look at another translation of the biblical meaning, it means that it is finished, complete, and perfect. Uh, God is doing something in this season, y'all. Uh, Boaz is, in him is strength. Mara is bitterness. Orpa is her neck. Ruth is beauty or satisfied friendship. The next slide, we also look at some more of the, their names. And I looked at different types of translations that talked about the different, what it represents as well. So we go back to Ruth. Ruth means friendship, beauty, or satisfied. Um, it also represents the human spirit. 
Naomi means beautiful, grace of God. My pleasantness, it represents the human soul. Hmm. Now, isn't this something right here? Hebrews 4 and 12 tells us that the word is like a two-edged sword, cutting a cinder, dividing to the, to the soul and the spirit. Now, listen to this. I want y'all to catch this. I said that for a reason. Look at the translation of the representation of what the name Ruth means. She is the human spirit, and Naomi is the human soul. Mm -hmm. My God, somebody catch that in the morning. Elimelech means the strength of, my, of the king. My God is king. It mm -hmm. represents the sin mm -hmm. nature of man. The next one here, Apostle, you want to grab it? Judiah. <clears throat> um, represent um, present. Hold on, hold on. Wait a minute, hold on, y'all. Hold on, slide 14. Hold on. I'm on the wrong slide here. I'm sorry, I apologize. That's my fault, Apostle. I apologize, man of God. Go ahead. Malone. Malone. Um, um, it means sickly sickness um on poly represents poorly represent poly <clears throat> um cologne yes um okay killing on represents or means failing consumption destruction and wasting the biblical meaning means to finish it means finish complete or perfect represents unsuccessful orpha means stubbornness her neck a gazelle the back of the neck the turning back the looking back um figuratively refers to the action of turning back and looking back and orpha represents pride mm -hmm. okay mara mara it means bitterness it represents broken hearted. Boaz means strong redeemer, a pillar in, in him is strength. It represents <coughs> Jesus. Obey, it means servant. It represents born again. David means beloved son represents Jesus. Jesus Christ <clears throat> is salvation. Represent Jesus, the Messiah. Israel means he will rule, represent man as a whole. People of God, listen. <clears throat> Ask yourselves this day, who will you serve? You're either going to serve God or you're going to serve your fleshly desires and your fleshly needs. You're either running towards your destiny. What do you see? Ask yourself, what do you see? Do you see destiny or do you see despair? We've come to tell you today that Ruth saw destiny when Orpha saw despair. When she looked at her mother-in-law, Naomi. Let me get back to this first slide and, and, and look at what Naomi was looking like. Give me just a moment. I got to come out. Y'all bear with me. She began to look at her mother-in-law. Okay, there it is. <clears throat> her mother-in-law. Look at that picture of these two women. Look at the older woman who has emptied herself out all of these years. She's, she's been a nurturer. She's been a mother. She's been a spouse. She's been a helpmate. Now she's older, she's wiser in her age. And the years, we can look at her face and see the years, how she's gracefully aged. On the left here, we see Orpah kissing her goodbye. On the right, we see Ruth. And to me, Ruth is looking up to heaven. And Ruth is saying, but you know what? You go ahead and leave Orpah but I'm going after my destiny. I'm going after what God has for me. I'm not gonna leave her in this season of her life. 
I know that it may look like her eyes are getting, oh, she's getting older. And she's like Eli when Eli became to the to the end of his life. And the word of God tells us that his eyes had waxed cold. And all of a sudden, you know, the light is going out in her eyes and the wrinkles are showing up on her skin. And A.E. just is beginning to show who she is in the years that and the toll she's gone through. But when I look at Ruth in this picture, it is so prophetically profound because I see Ruth looking up saying, God, but you know what? I'm not going to let her go. Lord, wherever she goes, I go. Wherever she lives, I live. Her people will be my people. Her God will be my God. Wherever she dies, I die. Wherever they bury her, I want to be buried next to her. And I'm not going to leave her. And I can see Ruth in this very picture on this very first slide that say, you know what? I'm to a place now, God, that I will not leave her unless I die. Only death can separate me from Naomi. Why? Because I have much to give and I want to give it to her. She's poured out all these years on everybody else. Somebody let this help you. You poured out all these years on everybody else. So guess what? It's time for people to begin to pour back into you. Ah, Let people begin to pour back into you. I'm going to do this live right here and just click it. All right, let me go back to my slide. Begin to allow people begin to pour back into you to be a blessing. Allow people to pray for you. Allow people to intercede. Allow people to give unto your bosom. Don't knock your blessings. Be a blessing to others. Begin to release what God has given you. Empty yourself out. Pour the oil of God upon your life. But tell God, God, send people that are covenant. Send people that are kingdom minded. Send people that have the heart for you, God. Send people that have the love for you, God. Send people in this season that are able to walk with me, baby, that's able to walk with me in different countries, that's able to walk with me throughout the nations, that's able to carry the oil, that's, carry, that's able to carry the weight that's on Apostle Herbie and Apostle Rosemary's head. God sent people in this season. Lord, we don't want the immature, but God, you called us to senior leaders. You called us to leaders and you called us to emerging leaders. We know who you called us to, the mature people, to a mature tribe to a remnant of people, to that remnant of people. You know, the ones where all of a sudden everything else is gone, but there's a remnant that's left. When the Lord begins to separate the wheat and the tares and he begins to pull them apart, don't worry about the tares and the weeds that God removes. Baby, you're the wheat. Don't worry about the fact that you love them still. You're the wheat. Don't worry about the fact that you sometimes you say, Lord, help them. Keep praying for them. Keep loving them. Keep praying that God continues to bless them. But guess what? This is your season to stay focused. Because anything and anybody that God removed had to be removed for your ascension. Anything that God is doing in this season is not for them. Stop looking back, Orpha. Become stable. Become fixed. Get your mind on the spirit of God and begin to say, okay, God. I feel like Job sometimes. Though you slay me, yet will I trust you. Though sometimes the bank account may be looking funny, men and women of God. Though sometimes some of you have gone through repossession. Some of you have gone through foreclosure. Some of you have gone through loss of loved ones. Some, some of you have gone through the house of slander. Some of you have gone through being deceived. Some of you have gone through the gossip, the gossip circles. Some of you have gone through backbiters. Some of you have been rejected by your own families. Some of your children are acting crazy. Some of your children may not be listening. Some of your children may not understand the sacrifice. Even in the church, leaders, let me talk to you too. Don't worry about it. God didn't, didn't send them there to be baby. God didn't send them there to be pacified. God sent them there for you to pour into them what he has for you. Everybody with you is not there to stay. It's a temporary situation. God will allow you to try to raise people up, to empty into them what he's given to you. But when you get to a place that God says, okay, this is no longer covenant. This is no longer conducive. They can no longer go. They are no longer authorized. They have no longer been given grace to your now. They no longer been given access to your now. Guess what? Cut them loose. Do it in love and let them go and watch God blow your mind. Baby, let me tell you something. When you listen to God, when you obey what God tells you to do, guess what? God will blow your mind. 
Apostle Herbie and I can attest to that globally. God is doing a great and mighty thing. Everybody else didn't know what was going on. They didn't know what we were doing. They didn't know how God was moving. It was a reason for it, y'all. It was a reason for it. All of this stuff was going on in the pandemic. We lost loved ones in the pandemic too. We lost friends. We lost family. All of this coronavirus stuff going on. But guess what? God still had us going. God still had us moving. Huh? I was sitting up here. Apostle Herbie and I went on a, a, a little mini vacation in Orlando, Florida, because we're in Central Florida. For a few days, Friday to Sunday, came back Sunday afternoon. And on my way driving, I had not even gotten out of Highlands County good into Polk. My phone rang. It was a family member telling me another family member had died. And I'm on my way. I'm trying not to lose it right here. I'm on my way to try to get some rest, to reset. And I find myself getting about six phone calls. My phone rang even in the time I checked into the, to the resort. My phone rang, 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 rang. I got about six calls. Apostle can vouch for me. And baby, I'm sitting up there and I'm planning a funeral. And the Lord says, if you suffer with me, for righteousness sake, so shall you reign. You will reign with me, daughter. And the Lord says, you know what? We can't sleep on this. I understand that some of you have lost loved ones. I understand you've lost family members. I know that you've lost friends, but guess what? You're going to have to go through it. God says his grace is sufficient for you. Uh, his grace is sufficient for you. I know it's not easy. This first slide that I clicked past because I'm, I'm getting caught up. We're telling you here, look at Orpha. I'm going to say, look at Ruth, forgive me. Look at Ruth, look at Naomi. This is Apostle Herbie and I, and that's the hands of God behind us saying, come. All of those who are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. The Lord is opening up right now and saying, I'm standing at the door of your heart, and I'm knocking. If you will just open up and let me in, I'll come in and I will sup with you. I will be your God and you will be my people. God is saying, my arms are wide open. Come back home, prodigals. Come back home, sons and daughters. You've never done so much that I can't use you. We need to understand something. What do you see? Do you see destiny or do you see despair, people of God? When you look at your pastors, when you look at your spiritual leaders, do you see something in them that you desire in your own life? Do you see the do you see the agape love of Jesus Christ? Are you hearing the unadulterated word of the heavenly Father? Do you see a pure heart? Do you see where people may have pulled you away from them because they were your spiritual leaders? They were those ones that God had given you to push you forward into your destiny, but you left prematurely. But you know what they said? Keep God first in everything that you do. Why? Because we love you and we're praying for you. It's okay when God disconnects people. Love them. Love them past their pain. Keep, keep when they come across your mind, pray for them. It's okay. It's okay. It wasn't meant to be, but it's okay. Because anytime people allow other people to get in their ears, Jezebels, witches and warlocks, not male or female to get in their ears and to talk about their spiritual leaders when you know that they are men and women of God that live a standard, that love the Lord, that fear him, that serve him with fear and trembling, and that will always have your back no matter what. Guess what? Then it's on you. It's on you, men and women of God. If you walk away prematurely, guess what you've done? You've aborted what God had for you flowing from them to you. And it's okay. Even though God won't reconnect you with them because that season has passed. It doesn't mean they don't love you. It doesn't mean they want the best for you. It just means, guess what? God has allowed them to ascend and to go further and to do more and to reach more. And he's enlarged their territories. He's given them new regions. He's given them new countries. He's given them the world. But they still love you. And they still want you to know that God loves you as well. 
Follow us on social media platforms. We're on the social media platforms. We're on YouTube. YouTube is RCN Ministries Global TV. It is also on YouTube, Apostle Rosemary, RCN Ministries, and OSGA. Um, we're on Facebook. I have a personal page. Apostle Herbie has a personal page still. Um, we have R R R RCN Ministries, which is Rosemary Connors Neverson Ministries on Facebook. We have OSGA Apostolic Network on Facebook. We have Apostle Rosemary C. Neverson on Instagram. We have LinkedIn, the same name. Um, um, hit us up on WhatsApp. We're on Pinterest. Uh, on our all of these are business platforms, the ones I'm calling out other than our personal one. Um, we're also on WhatsApp. If you're a, a leader or a ministry, a church, an orphanage, or Bible college, Bible schools, um, mission fields, all of these things God has given us in the midst of the pandemic to be overseers, to, to pioneer, to help give instruction, um, strategy, insight, all of these things. God is raising up people globally, and we're excited about what God is doing in other countries and in other leaders that are serving, that are down in the trenches, that are getting out into the villages, into the fields, into the rural areas, that are being a blessing to God. Um, partner with us at RCN Ministries. Become a part of what God is doing globally. Um, give into it. Go to our website, RCN Ministries. You'll be able to see about 10 or 11 tiles, I think it is maybe, um, maybe 12, but I'm thinking it's 11. You'll be able to see boots on the ground. You'll be able to see global global uh, missions or global something to that terminology. Begin to tithe, begin to sow seeds, begin to give into what God is doing around the world in our ministries, that it's not ours, that he's given us let me, let me say this real quick, that God has given us to steward. When I say ours, it's stewardship because everything that we have is God. Because the word of God tells us in Psalms 124 that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and everything that is in the earth or dwelleth in the earth, it belongs to God. It's not ours. God gives it to us to steward it. And in this season, we need to learn how to not just steward it, people of God, but to steward it well. Amen. These are the ways to give if you would like to sow a seed on what you've heard today. If you listen, if you're live, if you're listening and you don't have uh, financial um, provisions to sow, continue to pray for us, continue to intercede for us, um, continue to be a part of what God is doing. Because you know what? It's about the word of God. It's about spreading the gospel throughout the world um, to be able to impact and transform lives for the people of God. Um, but we do have our text to give that's running across the stream. It is 844-961-4333. Again, you can go to RCN Ministries, look at the different tiles, look at the different ways to give. If you all have our app, then you're able to go on there and keep up with a lot of the different things we're doing. Um, if you're a pastor or you're a part of a church or ministry, and if you are a part of a church and you have a pastor, a spiritual leader, seek advice from them before joining any other networks or anything. Talk to them, get counsel. Pray about it. Ask God to lead God and direct you once you have already talked to your leaders. Um, but in this season, you need multiple streams. Um, every pastor is not prophetic. Every pastor, and, and that's nothing bad to say. Every pastor is not prophetic. Every pastor is not an apostle. So everybody's not a prophet. Everybody's not an apostle. Everybody's not an evangelist, pastor, or teacher. Um, so we need to understand that in this season, you need streams. You need to be able to draw from different streams. And so Apostle Herbie and I in 2020, and also I think it was 20, might have been 2019 or 2020, I have to look back. But um, we also launched our Apostolic Network, and it is OSGA. You can go to um, rcnministries.com or osgaglobal.com if you're looking for an Apostolic Network, um, if you need mentorship, if you need counsel. Um, if you need fellowship, you know, whatever it is you may need, affirmation, all of these different things, we have that um, as uh, apostles, apostolic overseers globally, we're there um, to build the body of God, the body of Christ. Um, we're there to be um, an extension of what God is doing in each and every one of your lives. We'd like to thank you for joining us. Um, you can also text us at 352-325-5925. Or find us on WhatsApp. We're there as well under RCN Ministries. Um, join us on our podcast. That's going to be switching. Um, I think the last podcast I did on the 10th because we're getting ready to launch that a different way. We're not going to be weekly. We're going to actually be once a month. Um, it's probably going to be 30 minutes to an hour. But we're going to also do um, 
a video part as in an audio. So we're going to be doing that on our YouTube channel as well as our audio platforms, which is on Apple and all the other platforms that you can find any podcast on. Um, and that is ranking in different countries. And we thank God for that globally. At this time, I'm going to see if Apostle Herbie's already shaking his head. He said, no, it's good. So we want to say thank you all for joining. I'll get to these messages here um, and I'll reply to those guys in its entirety. Um, God bless you. We want to thank you um, and we honor each and every one of you all. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your prayers, for your intercession, for the support in any way that you're able to support what God is doing. May God bless you. May God keep you until next Sunday. Have a great, great day. God bless.